Hey everyone, so my name is Diavani and this video, uh, no, I don't like that. Okay, I'm not good with intros, so we just gonna get into the video because I'm not good with this. So here's a list of five things that I wish I knew before I began oil painting. First one on my list is, what was the first one? I ain't got my book. You don't have to use solvents to start oil painting. So when I first started looking up things in the oil painting world on YouTube, all of the people, nine out of 10 of the people that I were watching, they were using solvents. I would hear things about solvents and mediums, and I thought they were the same thing at first. I didn't know the difference. And then I didn't know that there were certain oils that you had to use and certain oils that you could not use. Because when I very, my very first oil painting, I went and I got like olive oil from the grocery section. And I thought that was okay. Yeah, that, that painting, it never dried. I threw it away. It wasn't never going to dry. Um, and so solvents and mediums are two different things. And I personally do not use solvents in my oil painting because it is toxic. Um, you will find some that have like low vapor and all this other stuff. I want no vapor. I don't judge anybody who does use them I, I i just don't use solvents i will make a video for solvent free oil painting for beginners i'll talk more about that in that in that video i will talk more about that in that video not this video i can't really talk number two is that i wish i would have known the difference in the quality of paints there are different grades of paints um student grade and then artist grade and then like the in between this painting i use the dowler rounding that is a lie i use master's touch master's touch oil paint i prefer the windsor newton over the master's touch but beginning i, I don't don't get the dollar rounding just go get master's touch fine touch whatever it's master's touch i think just go get that and put this back on the wall Oh, okay, good enough. You painted something with the dollar rounding and you went and painted the same thing with the Windsor Newton. You might find that the Windsor Newton looks better than the, the dollar rounding. And it's not that your technique was bad, it was just the paint wasn't given the richness that you needed it to give. So, yeah, I wish I would have known that. Number three, I wish that. I would have known that I did not need to buy every single paintbrush. When you're beginning a new craft, I know for me, it's like you get excessive over it and it's like, let me go buy everything. Let me go buy everything that the experts and the advanced people are buying because they're using it. That means I got to get it. Uh, you don't need a glass palette. You don't even need a palette knife. You don't need all of these things. You don't need a ton of brushes. Honestly, like most of my paintings, I use like one brush. I found one brush that I like, unless it's like fine details or it's like the large background or like the hair. I'm trying to, if I'm trying to cover a large space, I won't use an itty bitty brush for that. But for the most part, I use one brush for the whole painting. Like I said, an exception of little fine details. So you all my brushes that need to be clean. Those are brushes. That That is... This ought to be a shame to myself. That, those are all brushes. I got some palette knives in here. Some of the plastic ones. I got some metal ones as well. I like the plastic ones better though. But you would probably think, beginning, let me get the nice metal ones. Let me get those because those look nicer. They're more expensive. I don't want to get the little cheapy. I like these better. I recently just bought like a, a pack from of paint brushes from Michaels for $5.99. And it literally had like the brushes that I use. I like to use the flat round brushes. I'll find one brush in this, like I said, the small ones. And I will work that brush. I will work it. In fact, I did one painting with one brush. I didn't, I didn't use, I, this one right here. Pull another paint off the wall. This one right here, one brush. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's that's me. But um, doo -doo -doo. yeah, I did this with one brush, and um, yeah. But yeah, for all the details, I used one brush. <laughs> Yeah, like starting out, I just thought that I needed to buy like <laughs> all the expensive stuff. And I thought I needed a lot of brushes and a lot of all this stuff. And you don't. I will make a, like I said in my video for a beginning oil painting, solve it free. I'm gonna make a video of just like the short little supply list of the things you need because it's not much. I don't wanna put it all in this video because, you know, we got to leave some stuff for other videos. We got to do that sometime. So, um, do not get the little, um, little 99 cent pack. I don't like them because those bristles on those brushes look like that. And like when you're trying to put in detail, you're going to be getting paint everywhere. So I don't recommend those, but like, you don't need expensive brushes. Like you don't need to go spend a hundred dollars on a brush set. No, like, no, I don't think I'll ever do that. Mm -mm. I don't care if my artwork is in the gallery, in a museum. I'm not using, unless somebody gives them to me. But, yeah. Number four, what I wish I knew. Every piece does not need to be a masterpiece. So, like, every time I paint it, I would think that I'd get this canvas, this large canvas. Don't, e don't even start out with no large canvas. Go get you a little small 8x10, 9x12. Don't get these huge canvases thinking I'm finna make some, some I'm finna make a masterpiece. I'm, I'm going in. Don't do that. Don't do that. Not as a beginner because I have paintings that I have yet to finish. Back here. Oh, it's more than just this though. I'm gonna finish them. I'm gonna finish them one day. But I have so many paintings that I did not finish because I started out too grand. And then, like, I would be intimidated because I felt like everything needed to be a masterpiece. So before I even started painting, I put so much pressure on myself to make it look good. And if it didn't look good or, you know, it didn't turn out the way I wanted, I feel discouraged. Like, putting so much pressure on myself that I didn't even want to begin. And... The whole process of painting is that sometimes you're going to paint things and they're not going to look good, okay? Paint again. That was one artist, um, Lisa from Lacree Fine Art on YouTube. I love her. Go support her. Um, she says this, um, if, if a painting doesn't look good, it doesn't, that just means that it's not finished yet. Just keep adding layers. And so sometimes you'll have bad layers. And you just keep layering it until it looks good. And if it doesn't look good, so what? You learned something from it. Every painting is a learning experience. <laughs> you don't have to put all this pressure on yourself to paint something that's supposed to be worldwide famous, like the Mona Lisa or something. You don't have to stretch yourself out like that. I would watch these YouTube videos and people would paint and even doing color pencil and it would look like they just start painting on nothing like they just have this blank canvas and they just start painting okay those people have something on that canvas we have the lines we draw our line work and we erase it some with a needable eraser so that oh excuse me so that the lines are light so you don't see pencil marks and stuff in your art you know most people aren't just putting a paintbrush to a canvas and just like because you're risking your proportions. You're risking so many things going wrong. And those things are important. That is the um, that is the foundation of the painting. If you don't have the foundation right, your painting is going to be trash. Exception, because it is a good practice to, you know, do different studies and not have any line work. I understand that. But most of the time, if you are trying to make this beautiful finished piece of artwork, you're not practicing, you're going to put line work. And I would wonder how did they put that art, that reference on that thing and scale it up to the right size? Well, projectors or the grid method or tracing like with transfer paper or something like that. Like a lot of people are using different things to help them. It's not cheating, but it's to help get your image onto something. You might use a projector and then trace that image on there and then go and paint it in. 
And I spent so much, I stressed so much about how to get this image to this picture because I didn't know how. Those are my five things that I wish I knew before I began oil painting. I hope that this video adds some value to someone out there and that is not just a waste of time. I hope you got some jewels, some nuggets, some something out of this video, some substance to feed your art soul. If you like this video, please show your support. Leave a thumbs up down below. Please leave a comment in the description box. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, the more you comment, the more you like, the more popular this video will get. My goal is to grow my YouTube channel. I want to do art for a living. Maybe not full time, but I want to have a YouTube channel and I want to produce awesome content and produce awesome art. And I hope that along the way, I inspire others to get creative, to do their art and to follow their dreams. Um, so yeah, please subscribe, show your girl some love. My name is Diavani and as always, God bless you. Mm -hmm.